Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a new episode of Score Sheet. In every episode of uh, our program, we do have names, championships, tournaments, players, Olympic Games, Olympic champions, and there are names behind the camera to be considered as the main reason behind any success in any game. In this very special episode, I do have one of those brilliant stars behind the camera. Stay tuned on LTV International. I'll be back right after this. Welcome back. Before welcoming our dear guest, let me introduce him and give you a little data about him. Born on the 6th of February 1953, graduated from the Faculty of Engineering 1976, and uh, he did not um, feeling satisfied with his inborn intelligence, but he preferred to take his PhD in the artificial intelligence from America. 1994. He is the founder of the African Federation of uh, Bodybuilding, and so um, the game was introduced to the Olympic Games. He is uh, for 18 years now the president of the Egyptian Federation of Bodybuilding. He is the vice president of uh, the International Federation president, uh, Rafael Santoga. Santoga said more than once than beside giving him uh, the honorary. Uh, medal, I may say, of being the best official. If there is a way to honor him every little day, he is going to do it. And I think this man deserves more. Let me welcome our dear guest engineer, Dr. Adel Fahim. Doctor, thank you very much for being with us. I am, uh, I am thanking you very much for the introduction. Well, uh, I felt uh, as if you are speaking about somebody in the moon, but uh, you made me flattered. I no, thank you very it's much. Very, it's very clear that these words are very little compared with your career and compared with what you have done to this sport since 1995 when uh, Dr. Abdelmanam Amara, the former president uh, or the former general um, secretary, I may say, of uh, the Council of Youth and Sports, have chosen you to be responsible for the bodybuilding issue not only in Egypt, but I think it, prom it was promoted to the African continent. Tell me first, before going into this, how was this story? How have had you the idea of uh, uh, having the, um, the Continental Federation, or Confederation to be accurate, and then to move forward with bodybuilding to be introduced to the Olympic Games? Well, uh, first of all, I want to tell you that I am not a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. I belong to judo. This, is, this was my sport. I used to be, play judo in Heliopolis Club since I was 10 years. Mm -hmm. 
And I was a champion, and I was uh, an international champion. I was a captain of the national team of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And then I was, for two mandates, a member of the board of uh, the Egyptian Federation of Bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. And I was the first vice president of uh, bodybuilding in Africa. Mm -hmm. And I was the technical director of the national team, the days of the, the, the hero, uh, Muhammad Ali Rashwan. Mm -hmm. And I was with him 1984 in uh, Los Angeles when he got the silver medal. Mm -hmm. And I finished my second mandate. Uh, you know, the, the rule says that you have to stay for only two mandates. Mm -hmm. After two mandates, you have to rest for a mandate if you want to go back again. Yep. So 1992 was the end of my second mandate in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And uh, 1994 was the end of my mandate as a first vice president for Africa. And then all of once, uh, um, um, I got uh, a notice to communicate with the minister, Abdel Menem Amara, who was the minister of sports mm -hmm. at that time. He confiscated the, 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 the Egyptian Federation for some reasons. Mm -hmm. It was headed by the late uh, Abdel Hamid Gendi. He was mm -hmm. a great world champion. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the federation was confiscated for a reason or another. I think a number of people have resigned or something like that. Mm -hmm. So the federation one co was confiscated and I was appointed with some of my nice colleagues in this place. And it was supposed to be only for one year. This mm -hmm. was 19 January 1994. 94? 94, yes. Mm -hmm. I thought that uh, we will have uh, a short mandate. We are just coming temporary, for one year, one year maximum, yeah. and then we uh, leave it for the others. And uh, after this year, I went to the elections. Mm -hmm. People asked me to uh, nominate myself for the election, and I won. And I was astonished winning. A tycoon was this surprising for you? Of course, I was. I, I was against Abdel Hamid Gindi, who uh -huh. was. He, his pictures was in my room. I used to love okay. this man. Yeah. But I don't know what happened. It seems that uh, the chemistry was mm -hmm. good between me and the people of bodybuilding. I won him twice mm -hmm. in two different mandates. And uh, I stayed in the federation of the two, the two mandates because of my international position. Mm -hmm. And up to now, something like 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, during those 20 years, I was very lucky. Mm -hmm. I was able to uh, establish the African Federation mm -hmm. because there was no African Federation before the time. Yeah. And I was the president up till now, and they are saying lifetime. I don't love this word lifetime, but I'm still the president of the African Federation for the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, Arab Federation, uh, I am the president for the second mandate, and of course uh, the Egyptian Federation. International Federation, uh, I was nominated for the post of uh, Vice President for Africa. And I won it from the very first beginning, and I kept all those 20 years uh, f uh, Vice President. I just want to focus here on having the um, Continental or the African Federation to be able to compete, because there are some rules by the International Federation. If you want to compete in international uh, competition, especially the Olympic Games, you should have uh, the Continental Confederation before going through. Meaning that before the founding of the African Federation, we had nothing to do except the, the um, I don't want to say less or low level uh, co competitions, but yet we were not exposed or showing our talents into the international world. Uh, you're speaking very correct. What you're saying is very correct in most of uh, the sports. Mm -hmm. In bodybuilding, no. Mm. There is no nomination by continent to go to the, to the World Championship. Okay. You know, the, uh, the International Federation of Bodybuilding is 190 countries, 190. Mm. Big number. I think we are the third biggest number in uh, the international uh, federations. Mm -hmm. So when we go to a uh, uh, World Championship, every country is allowed to go. Mm -hmm. So World Championship, you find almost something like 80 countries mm -hmm. uh, participating. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no complication for any country to go. Mm -hmm. This does not mean that uh, we only allow strong countries. Any country can go. Even yeah. weak countries in the sport can go. Mm -hmm. uh, a team is, uh, a full team is nine uh, persons. Many of the countries, they come with one athlete. Some countries come with two, and some countries come with three. So this methodology mm. of the uh, IOC, of, of, of most of the sports, as you said it very brilliantly, 
is not in bodybuilding. Mm. Bodybuilding is open for anybody to participate in world championships. And no age limit? Uh, look, uh, yes, there is age limit. But when we are speaking about world championship for men, uh -huh. so men, this is open. Okay. Men allows a, a guy 16 years old or a man, mm. 60 something, mm. anybody is allowed provided that he has the ability to stand on stage and, find, and fight against youth. But we also have juniors and masters. We mm. have a world championship for juniors and masters. Mm. They just arrived early morning today. It was in Mongolia. Okay. It's a very far away uh, country. It is the country of Genghis Khan. <laughs> and yeah. uh, um, uh, I had the honor to go over there a number of times because I was responsible sometime of the Asian Federation reorganizing. We had some problems in reorganization. So we went to Mongolia. This was the juniors and the masters. Mm. Juniors are two weight categories, mm. under 75 kilos mm. and over 75. Mm. Masters are a number of things, yeah. from 40 to 50, and from 50 to 60, and mm. from 60 to 65, and from 65 to over. And when you look on the athletes 60 and 65, you feel how it is very nice to enjoy nice life, to practice up to, uh, up to this age. And maybe I, it's my first time to say it on television now, Asmat Sadiq has got a gold medal. We had three athletes participating. Asmat Sadiq for masters mm. and two other athletes for juniors. Mm. Asmat Sadiq got a gold medal mm. and what a great man and what a great uh, hooray for him. He deserved mm. it. I saw him this morning. I was very proud of him with a very big gold medal. Yeah. And he is a symbol. I think he is a symbol for all athletes that they have to play sports. And the two other guys, let me tell yeah. you quickly, the two juniors, mm. one got silver medal and the other one got fourth, fourth place. And it is his first time to have even Ma a passport. We can mention names? Uh, no, yes, of course. Ahmad Shams got the silver medal okay. and Hassan Mustafa got the, uh, okay. the fourth place. Mm. Hassan Mustafa is his first time to put himself on a plane. So he has a very big future in front of him. S and they had a, a, a technical uh, director, uh, uh, Mr. Hamdi Esebai, mm. and it was a successful trip. Congratulations to them. To all of and them. And congratulations for the fans. Uh, I may quote you saying sure. that the national team of uh, uh, bodybuilders holds the highest numbers of gold medals in the last 10 years, taking the first place in the male bodybuilding world ranking. You said that, of course, being proud of your achievement, this is great. But here the question is, in bodybuilding, in squash, Egypt yes. has a different way of looking to people, being the queen of the world regarding those two. Yes, this is correct. Uh, regarding your speciality, why Egyptians are that brilliant regarding bodybuilding, despite the fact that it needs full good nutrition, a special way of life, a special and different type of people, a special way even of dealing with them, not to miss a very tiny detail about them. Why and how and till when we are going to continue this way? Please give me some optimistic words. Uh, of course, I'll <laughs> tell you. The last